So we're now 20 months into the COVID-19 pandemic. We're still fighting it very much. So we thought now as we're get, gathering for Thanksgiving, we get a bit of a report card, see where things stand. And joining us this morning, the Dean of Medicine over at UNLV, uh, Dr. Mark Kahn. Doctor, good to see you in person for a change. Nice to see you, John. Good to see you. So let's first of all get to where we are right now. Um, 20 months, as we mentioned, cases are for the most part going down, certainly down from the peak. Where do we stand here in Southern Nevada in the fight against the pandemic? So we're doing just okay. Um, we have, you know, somewhere just under 60% of our population vaccinated with at least two doses. Uh, as you know, we have recommendations now for booster vaccines as well. Um, you know, we need to get more people vaccinated and we need to continue with the social distancing that's really going to be very important. And, you know, when you walk down the strip at night, there's just not enough people wearing masks, quite frankly. And we're, we're not over it yet, so we can't forget those public health methods methods. Mm. You know, you mentioned walking on the Las Vegas Strip. Anywhere around town, uh, it seems as though the effort to social distance and the effort to wear masks has, has relaxed for, for a lot of the public, whether it's through fatigue or just indifference. On a public health basis, what can be done to combat that? Is it a matter of putting more restrictions in place potentially? You know, Restrictions are only going to be so good because people still have to follow the recommendations. I think, you know, just some uh, public education, you know, we're getting close. If people practice social distancing, if people practice social distance, distancing for perhaps another six months, I think we could really say that we're on the other side of this, but we can't let our guard down. Mm. Can't let our guard down. Uh, families are about to gather for Thanksgiving, obviously, and whether they're coming in from out of town or they're just here in the valley all meeting for some place for dinner. What are some just simple things that people need to remember as they're sitting down at the table together uh, when it comes to staying safe during this, the pandemic? Again, it depends if people are vaccinated or not. So um, even for vaccinated people, it's going to be important to wash your hands, right? I think that um, minimizing social contact is still important. Certainly if people aren't vaccinated, they're safer away from um, others so that they don't either catch nor transmit the disease. So it really depends. You know, we had a very difficult Thanksgiving last year. Um, you know, when we were in the thick of COVID and hadn't had an available vaccine yet, now that people are vaccinated, I think we can loosen up some of those requirements. But for the unvaccinated, I think there's, they still need to be very cautious. Mm. Obviously, uh, we know that uh, children as young as five can get the, a version of the coronavirus vaccines. The boosters are now available for, for all adults uh, here in Southern Nevada. We've both been vaxxed and boosted and whatnot. One question I've always had is, you know, again, this is, I guess, pre-booster. Can you just get the vaccine twice? Is there something in the the creation of the vaccine that would prevent someone from instead of getting the booster, just getting the two doses all over again? So, John, you know, the booster for Pfizer is just the regular vaccine for Moderna. It's a half dose. So essentially, that's exactly what you're doing. The booster right now isn't anything special. As we get more variants of the virus, this mRNA technology makes it much easier to create vaccines for some of the mutated viruses. We don't have them commercially available yet, but they're being studied. Hmm. It's interesting. I think a lot of folks, when we talk about vaccine hesitancy, they don't trust how fast the vaccine was created, how fast it's been approved by the FDA and so forth, and how fast the public has been uh, receiving it. Pregnant women, for example. How do you respond to those who have either those hesitancies over the vaccine or just don't trust it at all? So, so look, you know, the technology behind the mRNA vaccines really goes back to about 1985 uh, at my alma mater at the University of Pennsylvania. The technology has been developed since then. Uh, we have had other mRNA vaccines for things like Ebola, et cetera, that haven't been FDA approved because we don't have Ebola in this country. So this was really a derivation of an existing technology. And you know, the proof's in the pudding with billions of doses of vaccine given now. This is a safe and effective vaccine. Is, are we at a point now where it's almost like the flu, where it's not a matter of beating the coronavirus pandemic, but we just sort of learn to live with a version of COVID-19? So, you know, I hope that if we get enough people vaccinated, we're gonna see a lot less of this disease. 
Coronaviruses naturally circulate through the population. They're responsible for common colds. And there's even a theory, perhaps, that the common colds that we get every year previously perhaps were endemic and epidemic in the population. So I think we're gonna be living with, with a form of the COVID virus. I think we just all hope that it's not as lethal and not as deadly. Mm. Uh, let's get to some viewer questions. We have some questions we'd asked uh, the public uh, to, to uh, submit their questions for you as we knew we were, you were gonna be on. Here's a question from Stu who uh, says uh, he got the single dose J&J &J vaccine back in April, trying to find out whether or not the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine gives higher immune response for a booster. I know when I got my uh, booster, I got the Pfizer booster, even though I got the Moderna initial vaccine, and essentially you could mix and match. Yeah, I think that you're right, John. You can really mix and match. There is some data that suggests that if you got the Pfizer vaccine and you boost with Moderna, there may be a more robust immune response. So it's certainly not wrong to do that. But I don't think we have the data really comparing head to head to say one way is better than another. What is known is people who've been vaccinated need to get a booster shot. Uh, Lily asks this question. We were talking about social distancing and wearing masks. Uh, are face shields an alternative to a mask? I think we're referencing some of the clear shields you maybe you see uh, around town. Does that have the same level of protection? So. You know, when you wear a mask, you do two things. Firstly, you protect others from you potentially infecting them. And secondly, there's some protection to the mask wearer from getting infected with any virus, but Corona is what we're talking about. The problem with face shields is they don't really occlude the mouth and nose. So there's still air and potential for particles to get around the shield. So shields are not as good as masks, uh, probably better than nothing. But uh, really, I think folks should wear a mask. And I should mention, you and I aren't wearing a mask, but we've both been vaccinated and boosted, and we're six feet apart. Yeah. So normally, we'd be wearing masks as well. Yeah, we wear masks in, in, in the studio as well. Um, <clears throat> final question, I believe, comes from DJ, who uh, talks about why, uh, asks why masks are mandatory indoors everywhere except for restaurants, a place where we're all constantly opening our mouths, leaving saliva on the rims of glasses, utensils. Uh, we, she knows they need to make money too, just curious. I think that goes back to the idea that we were talking about before of some of the regulations that are still in place. Is, there a, uh, is it a bit um, confusing, I think, for some members of the public to see what's allowed and what's not allowed? I don't know how to respond to that, but it, it, there's some sort of confusion, I think, some, uh, among some of the public. Yeah, I think you know, there's science and there's public perception. Um, the science would suggest that we should be wearing masks as much as possible, right? That's how we're going to prevent transmission of the virus. But then there's a practical reality. You can't eat and drink through a mask, right? So when you're in a restaurant, you know, you still have to lift the mask to eat and drink. Um, the amount of time that you keep the mask on, though, is, is really going to uh, determine how good the protection actually is. When you're outside, because you're not in an enclosed space, um, there is more area for uh, particles to dissipate, if you will, so you're not uh, going to get as high a concentration. And that's why uh, masks uh, don't have to be worn outdoors. Again, though, that's public perception, not science. The science suggests that the way to prevent transmission of COVID and other viral infections is through social distancing, mass hand washing, et cetera. And one of the interesting things is, you know, we had a very, very light flu season last year, and that's because of social distancing. So, in fact, it works. Well, Dr. Khan, good to see you once again. Good to see you in person, and have a happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, John. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Folks, get vaccinated.